Hey, Diamond Painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in to share week seven of Summer with the Masters 2022. I can't believe we're already at week seven. That means we're almost at week eight, which means we're almost finished. I'm sad, but I've had such an amazing time witnessing your epic creativity during this event. And I'm so excited as we round out the event to see your finishes rolling in over on Instagram at hashtag summer with the masters 2022. I'm so proud of you. It's been so fantastic and you've done such a great job with the event again this year. Now, please forgive the audio in this video today. I am having to record this audio as a voiceover, which I hate doing. It's not my usual way of making videos. Not only that, but I'm making this at night so the whole family is in bed and I have to temper my excitement a little bit. Can't quite be as enthusiastic as usual, but we do what we have to. I have a new job during the day, so um, that is cut into some of my filming time. Big changes are afoot for me. I'll have more to share about that soon and I'm not going anywhere, but please just forgive kind of this weird setup today. If you're a returning subscriber, it's so fantastic to see you. Welcome back. Thanks so much for hanging out. If you're brand new to the channel, huge welcome to you. I'd love to have you as a subscriber and see you all the time. If you love crafting content with a little bit of weirdness, you're totally in the right place. First off, before we get into the meat of the video today, I want to tell you a little bit about all the things you see on the screen. The FTC requires me to tell you that the canvas you're seeing was gifted to me by Crafties. I'm also an affiliate for Crafties along with my co-host for the event, Katie, over at Diamonds and Washi. So if you're in the market for a Crafties canvas, I'll make sure that I stick both of our affiliate links down in the description along with a little discount code from each of us. That's not what this is about at all, but I have to make sure I tell you about that right up front. This canvas is a 40 by 40 centimeter round drill canvas called Water Lily Pond with Japanese Bridge. This is actually one of Crafties' paint by number kits that they have converted into a diamond painting kit for me. And you're welcome to reach out to their customer service and request any of their paint by numbers as diamond paintings as well. My pen is a special creation just for Summer with the Masters 2022 from Butterfly Effect Wares. Oh, it's so gorgeous. They base the colors for this pen on one of my very favorite paintings, St. Cecilia by John Strudwick. Stay tuned for the giveaway portion for a little more news about this pen. My tray today is from another event sponsor, Muni Made the fabulous Muni Maid. If you have not seen Muni Maid's custom Summer with the Masters tray set, you will soon because I purchased one and it's on the way to the house and just hasn't arrived yet. Huge thanks to Muni Maid for sponsoring the event and this custom curated set is absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to show it to you. My cover minder is also from Butterfly Effect Wares. I'm having a blast with my canvas. I'm having a blast with the event. This is a tiny canvas and I know many of you could have finished it 40 times by now, but alas, my life is what it is <laughs> right now. So I'm doing my best, but I'm having a lot of fun with the canvas. I also want to let you know that you will not see a gallery of finishes today, not because I didn't have material or because I didn't have time, but I decided I'm just going to save some of those finishes for our grand finale on July 31st, since it's so close at this point. So stay tuned for that. Lots more fun to come. If you're hanging out here and you're not sure what I'm talking about with Summer with the Masters or any of this business, I'll link a video up in the cards so you can figure out exactly what's going on. You've got two weeks left to play along with us if you'd like to, but it's never too late to start and we would love to have you. Now today's video is all about provocative art, and so it's going to be tantalizing, salacious, salty, provocative, all the things you've come to expect here on Tiny Worlds of Wonder, right? While much of what I'm showing you today isn't all that provocative by modern standards, or it's only provocative in the sense that it causes like deep reflection rather than shock. If your personal values and beliefs cause strong feelings about nudity, frank imagery surrounding death or dying, or discomfort with atypical depictions of Christianity or its symbolism, today's video might not be for you. I'm not trying to offend anyone with making this video today. It's meant to be purely for fun 
and for relaying of information rather than any kind of commentary or endorsement about the artwork. It's also possible that this video may be demonetized, and that's a bummer because it was a lot of work to make. So if that does happen and you don't see any ads in the intro of the video, and if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor by watching or sharing one of my other monetized videos, that would be greatly appreciated. Art might be an exception to YouTube's nudity policy, but I'm not completely sure at the moment I'm recording this. So since this video might get demonetized anyway, why not start with a bang? <laughs> this quite graphic painting titled which is going to their Sabbath is one of many depictions sensationalizing both witchcraft and female nudity in European art. Here in this painting by Louis Ricardo Falero, we see all the symbols of the satanic from wild disrobed ladies to goats and broomsticks and bats and skeletons and lizards. Oh my, Falero was a Spanish artist who lived from 1851 to 1896, and he had, let's say, a proclivity for painting nude women in a variety of contexts. If you're a lover of the female form, his work is definitely for you. This painting called Moon Nymph incorporates both Falero's love of ladies and his love of astronomy. Fun facts about this artist, A, he called himself the Duke of Labronsono, which was apparently an invented title. B, he impregnated his maid at the age of 17 and then fired her. And three, everyone's pretty sure he really loved the opium. Valero sadly died at the age of just 45 years old. Whatever judgments there may be about his character, he clearly is an accomplished painter with a strong grasp of anatomy. Now, despite this next artist's offensive views about femininity and female artists, Christian Zartman loved color and he used it well. Zartman was a Danish painter who lived from 1843 to 1917. He had very unconventional views for his time on sexuality and gender, and many historians agree that we can see Zartman's sort of efforts to make gender non-conforming space for himself in his work. Despite his open disdain for femininity, he frequently portrayed women who themselves did not conform to to society's views of gender roles or views on aesthetic beauty. Maybe these women were in masculine poses or were older or heavy set or had body types that society of the time didn't deem as attractive as the conventional subjects for artwork. He also used male models at times and painted them with female anatomy and characteristics. This example called Adam in Paradise was painted near the end of the artist's life and was part of a group of male portraits he created. This piece was one of many considered too unconventional and too vulgar and erotic for display at the time. Not only is Adam nude in this painting, but he also looks bored, disengaged from the audience, which was in and of itself scandalous because of the religious connotations of Adam in the biblical story. This painting from 1912 is a depiction of the trickster god, Loki. Zartman uses the same sexualized depiction of a male nude, along with the same bright color palette and engaging expression in his model. In essence, Zartman treated the male nude the way female nudes have been regarded throughout art history, which is as aesthetic objects. Now, one might not consider Michelangelo's works all that provocative by today's standards, but at the time they were created, that wasn't the case. Michelangelo's famous The Last Judgment, inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy, is one of the most controversial paintings of its time. This mural measured a whopping 39 by 45 feet, and today it's located in the Sistine Chapel in Rome. Now, in medieval times, people were traditionally dressed according to their rank in society, but in this painting, Michelangelo levels the playing field quite controversially by painting almost all the figures nude, especially the men. Jesus is located in the center and is portrayed as a large and powerful figure with Mary by his side, and on his right and left, we see people being rewarded or condemned. A number of saints are present in this work, of course, 
and controversially, many figures from mythology are included alongside them. Here we see St. Bartholomew holding his own skin. Now this skin is normally viewed as actually a self-portrait of the artist Michelangelo. We see Charon, the boatman and gatekeeper of the river Styx, who leads the condemned to you know where. And on the bottom right is Minos, the king of hell. Now one legend about this painting says that Minos was actually given the face of fierce Michelangelo critic Baggio de Sassena, who is having his junk bitten by a snake. So there's some payback for you. This painting was very controversial when it was created because it was radically different than the traditional depictions of The Last Judgment and because of the large-scale portrayal of nudity, particularly among the saints. After Michelangelo's death, clothes were painted on a few of the figures, but they were eventually restored as completely as possible in the 1980s and 90s. Now you guys know what time it is. It's giveaway time for week five. I'm sorry that I have to contain my excitement so much here today. This voiceover thing stinks. Okay, we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to contain my quiet excitement. and I'm going to channel it out through my whispering. So our prizes for week five, just in quick review, were a $25 gift card from Diamond Painting Shop, a Muni-made set of curated trays created especially for summer with the masters, and a paddy wax custom scent pack. Are you guys ready? I'm dying to know. Are you dying to know? We're gonna roll the dice here. The winner of the Diamond Painting Shop $25 gift card is Shayna Wright. Congratulations, Shayna. Quiet clappy. <laughs> <laughs> the winner of the Muni Made curated tray set is Julie Herman. Congratulations, Julie. Woo! And the winner of our Patty Wax Custom Scent Pack is Deborah Tallman. Congratulations, Deborah. Congratulations to all three of you. I'm so excited to share some Summer with the Masters. 2022 goodness from our sponsors with you oh so grateful to our sponsors thank you all so much now of course it wouldn't be a video day for summer with the masters without letting you know what i'm going to be giving away the next time i make a video so the next time i make a video i'm going to be giving away another Diamond Painting Shop $25 gift card. Thank you so much to Rosa Brito for donating a number of these for Summer with the Masters. We're so grateful. And I'm going to be giving away a custom pen from Butterfly Effect Wears in this beautiful design like the one I'm showing you here. Like I said earlier, Butterfly Effect Wears created this blank. They turned the pens for us. These look absolutely gorgeous. I know you're going to love this. Now, as you see the list of our sponsors scrolling across the screen here just for a moment, I want to let you know how you can sign up to get in on this final giveaway from me here during the event. Make sure you sign up on the Google form linked in the description below with the canvas you're working on if you have not done so yet. And then would you please leave a comment below with a time when you were shocked by art or changed by art. Now this can be shocked or changed in any way at all. Maybe it was a good experience, maybe not, but I wanna hear about it. Please leave that comment by July 25th. I'll be drawing those winners and I'll have them ready to share with you on our grand finale wrap up video, maybe along with some other goodness, you know. You never know. Hang around and see. Thanks again to our sponsors. Congratulations to the winners. Be watching for an email from me over the coming days just so I can confirm your details. Now back to some provocative art. Ooh la la. Now next up in our exploration of provocative art is a genre called vanity paintings or vanitas paintings. These kind of paintings began as an artistic tradition in the 17th century in the Netherlands. And the purpose of these paintings is reminding the viewer of the fleeting nature of life, the ultimate meaninglessness of our common daily pursuits, and all that positive energy. 
you know, painters often included skulls or decaying flowers in these kinds of paintings. These are things that depict mortality, of course, and it's common to find other collections of objects meant to call out activities that we humans put a lot of energy into that maybe don't quite stand the test of time. This example is by Harmon Steenwick from around 1640, and here we see a skull surrounded by books, musical instruments, a sword, and maybe several other objects that it doesn't take a genius to riddle out the deeper meaning of, if you know what I'm saying. There are many, many examples of Vanitas paintings out there, and I always find it fun to view the collections of objects that the various artists choose to include. I haven't found diamond paintings yet, thank goodness, but you know, they might fit well. Here are a couple other examples of Vanitas paintings. In this one, I love the dark juxtaposition of the memento mori or the remembrance of death combined with the more vibrant symbols of life. This is called Allegory of Human Life by Joris van Son, painted around 1658. In this one called Allegory of Vanity, Antonio de Pareda shows an angel surrounded by and unaffected by all the vanities of human life, reminding us that all of these worldly accomplishments are temporary. And this fabulous Memento Mori painting called The Garden of Death by Hugo Simberg, circa 1896, would be a great canvas for drills and chills. I'm just saying. Stay tuned over at Diamonds and Washi for more info on drills and chills. Last but not least today, I want to explore one of my favorite provocative artists, Adolf Hiramie Herschel. Now, Herschel is not provocative in the explicit sense of the word, but his paintings have a lot of deep allegorical meaning, and I love how they make me consider my own place in the world, my own mortality, and even the compassion I ought to have for others who are on this journey with me. Herschel was a Hungarian Jewish painter who lived from 1860 to 1933 and largely studied and worked in Italy. Now, I'll never forget how I felt when I first saw this piece, A Hazardous at the End of the World, which was painted in 1888. The bearded man is a Hazardous, a legendary man cursed to wander the world until the end of time. He's the last living man on earth, and he, you see him here walking in this polar wasteland, surrounded by eternity and death, who are personified by an angel and a skeleton, with this dead female figure surrounded by crows in the front which represents the end of humanity. I have always found this piece both beautiful and terrifying and of course deeply moving. Now quick disclaimer here, the next painting is a little bit difficult to view as it does portray distressing images of children, so please click off here if that isn't good for you today. Another amazing example of Herschel's allegorical painting is called Souls on the Bank of the Archeron. This was completed in 1898. The Archeron, or the River of Woe, in mythology is one of the five rivers of the Greek underworld, and the souls in this painting are waiting to cross over. Off to the left side, you can see the boatman coming for them, while a figure who I believe is Hermes guides these souls to the afterlife. I find Herschel's work very moving, and if you love allegory and symbolist paintings, as well as amazing artistic technique, I think you'll love exploring more of his work. So there you have it, you guys. Five examples of tantalizing, salacious, salty, provocative art. I hope you found this video interesting, stimulating, I also want to leave you with a reminder that art is meant to explore the unexplored, to push boundaries, to make us face ourselves, and even to provoke us to think about things we might not have considered before. So the next time you think what the actual is going on here when you're looking at a piece of art, try to look beyond the immediate and into the artist's deeper message. You might find that the exploration changes you. Thanks so much for hanging out today. My usual sign off seems a little weird. So just remember, as always, make them talk and keep them guessing. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.